Welcome back to Computer Networks, uh, Chapter 2. So in the previous chapter, we had a bit of a, a bird's eye view over the whole uh, layered network modeling approach. Uh, and we looked you know, each of the, the layers uh, in some way in there. And now we start to go through those layers in more detail. So this chapter is really about uh, the bottom two layers. So the, uh, the physical link and data link layers about how we can actually move information uh, between computers uh, in different ways. So let's get underway. Okay, so as you say, in chapter one, we were, you know, we came to that understanding that a computer network really is a, an interconnection of computers connected via uh, some or various means. Um, in the textbook in particular, uh, this whole idea of a, a cloud uh, was introduced, uh, where we abstract away actually how the network is even structured uh, so that you can define applications, if you like, with uh, software-defined networking and some of those concepts to be able to say, right, here is our, our, a bunch of uh, computing resources that are connected in some way um, to give this particular topology uh, and intended result. But how do we actually get computers to connect to each other, whether it's through a cloud or whether it's in a, a more traditional sense? And that's what we're going to uh, really look at in this chapter. So in that regard, um, we are going to look at the, the different ways that you can think about connecting nodes together. We're going to look at the way that we encode data, the way that we frame uh, data to make discrete uh, data units, uh, error, de error detection, uh, and in some cases, correction, uh, reliable transmission of data, uh, which of course is related to error detection. Uh, then we'll have a good look at, uh, at Ethernet and multiple access networks. So this is where more than two devices can actually be on a link. So instead of just being either end of a, a link, uh, you might actually have a, a bunch of them all connected on uh, together. Uh, and finally, we will have a look at wireless networks as well. So what we're really aiming to get out of this chapter uh, for you is an understanding of how different media can be used to move data around. Uh, and a lot of the the, fact, the issues that kind of uh, come into play when you try and do that. Because uh, for example, if you're doing a, a wireless network, you've kind of got this idea of, well, you can have a radio, uh, or even with a, a wired network, you might have a wire connecting or multiple wires connecting uh, two computers together. But how do you actually make information flow in regular, controllable, reliable manner uh, over either of those approaches? Uh, and how, how do you kind of frame data in that sense as well, in terms of even if you can send ones and zeros down uh, a wire or over a radio, um, how from that do you kind of form these higher level ideas of, of packets of information being able to move around uh, from device to device? And then of course, uh, looking at how we, uh, and getting an understanding of, of how error detection and correction uh, can come into play. And, yeah, but there's a variety of things that can cause difficulties with uh, communication, even when we have that. And so thinking about how we can form reliable networks, uh, despite these various transmission issues and problems. Uh, and some of that actually comes down to how we manage access to the media, particularly if it's a shared media. Uh, so we'll talk about media access control, uh, which is you know how to choose when someone can transmit so that they don't kind of stomp on somebody else's transmission, or if they do, that you can at least tell that it's happened so that you can recover from it. Uh, and then, yeah, having a, a bit of a, a look at some of the, the different approaches to, uh, to wireless networking uh, and how that can be structured. Okay, uh, we'll stop there for this video and we'll start having a look at this in the next one.